Hello and welcome to Medieval Mondays. Thank you very much. Um, today we're going to be talking about why that didn't hurt and how people in the Middle Ages kept themselves safe on the battlefield. Thankfully I was wearing a coat of plates to keep me safe. And even though strapping metal to yourself as a form of defence may seem logical, in practice it was actually quite complex. Armour doesn't just need to be strong enough to protect you, it also needs to be flexible enough to allow you to move and fight. During the early Middle Ages, male armour provided great protection without restricting the wearer's mobility. Its thousands and thousands of individual links allowed it to move like fabric and also resist against cuts and slashes. However, medieval weaponsmiths were able to counter the benefit of male armour's flexibility by creating heavy hitting weapons that can crush and cleave, breaking the bones of the wearer underneath, or even worse. They were also able to create long, thin, piercing weapons like long bodkin arrows, which could slip through the gaps in the male links and stab into the wearer underneath. In response, medieval armourers began to produce armour which was made of overlapping metal plates, which would spread the force of incoming blows significantly increasing the wearer's chances of survival. Though this more rigid style of armour did provide better protection, it wasn't able to be used in places such as under the arms or on the inside of joints, as it would limit the wearer's movement. It's important to note that the introduction of the coat of plates didn't mean that male armour became obsolete. In fact, the coat of plates was commonly worn over the top of male armour to provide additional protection. There are very few surviving examples of medieval coats of plates. However, the one I'm wearing is a modern reproduction of a coat of plates found at the site of the Battle of Visby. The original is on display at the Gotlands Museum, and if we have a closer look, we can actually see how a coat of plates is made. We can see how the individual plates overlapped and encased the wearer's back and front to protect their stomach, chest and spine. Though the fabric that held the overlapping plates together has long since disintegrated, medieval art shows us that they would have been attached using rivets. Rather than the plates being riveted to each other, they were riveted to the fabric front. This meant that they can move relatively freely, providing crucial mobility to the wearer. After all, if you can't move to fight, there's only one way that that fight's going to end. Interestingly, there are clear similarities between the coat of plates, which were widely used across Europe in the 14th century, and the design of the Lorica Segmentata, used by Roman infantry, depicted here on Trajan's column, which was carved over a thousand years before medieval armourers were inventing the coat of plates. Both are made of overlapping metal plates, which protect the wearer's torso, and allow them to move freely to fight while wearing it. So, the coat of plates gave significantly more protection than wearing male armour alone. Its rigid yet flexible design meant that it helped to spread the force of incoming attacks without restricting the wearer's movement. And as clever as this was, the Romans had actually done it over a thousand years before. I guess history does repeat itself after all.